the word hotel, a Wyoming landmark since 1941. When guests check in here, they become a living piece of a rich history that starts as early as 1893. This is the year that a young Charles Wirt arrived in Jackson, Wyoming on horseback. He came to Homestead to find his place in this new town of opportunity. Charles was wed to Loretta Wirt, who was unaccustomed to the rough life of the West with its long winters and harsh conditions. Nonetheless, over the years, she became an able aide on the ranch with their two sons, John and Jess. Charles was a skilled horseman and soon built the livery stable in town. The livery stable went through many phases in its history. It was a stable, a blacksmith shop, and even an auto repair shop at one time. But most importantly, it became somewhat of a community center. The winters were long and hard in Jackson, and the livery gave the town a social hub to drink, dance, and socialize. It was likely here that Charles Wirt began to think about a hotel as a serious endeavor. Soon after, he bought the four lots where the livery sat for a reported $25 a piece. These lots would later be the foundation for the Wirt Hotel. John, Jess, and Charles worked in the summers as hunting and fishing guides for the wealthy. They realized early on the enormous potential in tourism. In 1932, Charles bought the old Warner Fish Camp on Jackson Lake. It wasn't quite the upscale hotel lodging he had envisioned, but it was a start. Sadly, Charles died of cancer soon after he bought the camp, and it was up to John and Jess to carry out their father's dream. With the hard work of John and Jess, the old Warner Fish Camp became a premier outdoorsman's lodge. Guests came from all around the states to enjoy some of the best hunting, fishing, and rustic comfort of the West. John and Jess honed their hotelier skills over the years, and in 1940, were ready to fulfill Charles's dream, the Wirt Hotel. But Jackson, Wyoming in the 40s was still only a tourist destination in a few summer months. When people heard of the Wirt's dream to build a hotel off the dirt roads of this small western location, they thought John and Jess were even crazier than their father. John and Jess hired builder John Grimmis from Idaho Falls to design and build the hotel. They secured a loan and the construction of the Word Hotel began. John and Jess were said to have worked harder than anyone on the construction of the Word Hotel. They worked day and night and were even said to have mined their own sandstone from the nearby Grove on Quarry for much of the masonry. And they spared no expense. By the time the hotel was completed, John and Jess invested $150,000 into the hotel everyone thought was destined to fail. But besides John and Jess, no one took into account their secret saving grace, gambling. When John and Jess were growing up, there was one thing that stuck out in their minds. Wealthy tourists loved to play the game of chance. When they saw thousands of dollars being waged on everything from the cutter races to the late night poker match, they knew real money was to be had in the casino business. Contrary to popular belief, gambling has always been illegal in Wyoming. However, in the early 1900s, it was tolerated as a tourist amusement. The Wirt was no exception. Blackjack, roulette, poker, craps, and slots were all played heavily at the Wirt. And contrary to all the naysayers, John and Jess paid off the hotel in just two short years. The Wirt was a cash cow, and what better way to drink off your losses or celebrate your winnings than with a cocktail at one of the most unique bars in the U.S., the Silver Dollar Bar. The Silver Dollar Bar was built in Salt Lake City and provided 46 feet of the unmistakable trademark of the uncirculated Morgan Silver Dollars from the Denver Mint embedded in the Serpentine Bar. Tourists and locals alike would sit at this iconic bar and enjoy drinks, hospitality, and dancing. As the law began to crack down on gambling, it was clear that the hotel needed another means to get guests to come to the Wirt. Naturally, the answer was again entertainment, this time legally. The hotel provided Jackson's first venue for out-of-town musicians and big-name performers. John and Jess lured them in with fishing and hunting adventures, as well as some refreshing new scenery from the typical cities the entertainers were accustomed. Willie Nelson, Garn Little Dyke, Roy Clark, Jerry Jeff Walker, Doc Watson, and even Arlo Guthrie 
appeared at the Wirt showroom. It was August 5th, 1980. At 7.30 p.m., the first plume of smoke billowed out of the building. Within minutes, the entire establishment was ablaze. Volunteer firefighters, as well as local bystanders, risked life and limb to stop the blaze. But a mix of winds and dry cedar was no match for the building. It was hard to believe that the heart of Jackson was gone, all from a small bird's nest on the neon hotel sign, which first sparked the flames. Current hotel owner Leo Haywood vowed to rebuild. It took an entire month just to remove the char debris, which was estimated to be over a thousand tons. Seemingly, the only thing salvaged was the famous silver dollar bar and the grand staircase. And in June of 1981, that bar was officially reopened for business. A celebration of the Old West was thrown to christen the New Word Hotel. This celebration was such a hit that it continues to this day at the annual Old West Days. Since the reopening in 81, the Word Hotel has changed hands, but never changed its unique style and heritage. The Wirts knew that the hotel should be a year-round meeting place for all types, where cowboys could mingle with movie stars, skiers could meet with wranglers, and all would feel a genuine hospitality as unique as its surroundings. Countless stories have been told of the now famous Word Hotel in Jackson, Wyoming. Some true, some tales, and some a mix. Whether you are a visitor or a longtime local, a walk through the Word Hotel is a walk back in time and a journey through its incredible history. <laughs>